But I really learned at the very beginning that helped me a great deal. And I never forgot is know the market. Again, cliche, big words, but know it. Like you need to know every sale, everything that comes on the market as much as you can at least of one neighborhood. So the question is this, how do most agents find the secrets to succeed in today's competitive real estate market, especially when the top agents are keeping those secrets to themselves? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. Hi, I'm Aaron Amuchastegui, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Amuchastegui with a quick commercial break, but you guys have been hearing these ads follow-up boss, right? They've been one of our longest standing sponsors of the podcast. And heck, most of you guys actually use follow-up boss. You've heard from so many of our interviews when we're asking people, what is your favorite CRM? Follow-up boss is by far the most trusted picked CRM that we hear from people that we're interviewing. You know, follow-up is huge. As an investor, there are so many times recently that we reached out one extra time to somebody that two months ago said they thought about selling us the house. And by just following up again, they said, yes, I'm ready to sell today. And they didn't know us from anybody. They were gonna say yes to the next person that reached out. And it was the fourth or the fifth time that we reached out to them. So follow-up is important as an agent, as an investor, as everything. You know, follow-up boss gets you and your team totally organized. Contacts, leads, all in one place. They have like 250 integrations to all the other things out there for like texting, phones, voicemails, all the other products that are out there. It helps you convert leads to deals and then you decide how you want to expand and exactly when that happens for your business. So tons of guests in here. Here's a couple of our guests saying what they like about Follow-Up Boss. I think Follow-Up Boss gives you the most integrations Mm -hmm. that are simple and it gives you the best ability to go and integrate large things into one single solitary platform. Um, it tracks everything that I need. I can customize it if I want. If I want to go smart list based, that's fine. If I want to go task based, it's fine. It just really helps me never drop a ball because it, it's so user friendly. Also, before I forget, Follow Up Boss is hosting FubCon. Yes, FubCon 2022. It's an annual event hosted by Follow Up Boss the leading CRM in the real estate industry. The three-day event is packed with actionable tips, strategies that agents can use to double their listings, convert more buyers, and create systems that their agents love using. And right now, as the market gets tougher, a conference like this is exactly the thing you need. The keynote speakers are some of the most iconic agents in the business, and they're sure to inspire and motivate attendees. In addition to educational sessions, there'll be plenty of networking opportunities for some of the industry's brightest real estate professionals. FubCon is a perfect opportunity to learn and take your business to the next level. I hope you check it out. Hey, everybody. Stephanie Brackett here with Real Estate Rockstars, another awesome edition. And I am super excited to introduce you to Harold Clark. And Harold, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about you because you are in beautiful Hawaii right now, which is probably where everybody wants to be. Yes, I'm loving every minute of it. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. I own a couple of real estate brokerages in Hawaii at the very high end, and also a sales and marketing company that is launching the Mandarin Oriental in Honolulu, which is quite exciting. And is that a mixture of residences and hotel? Is that what it is? Yes, yes. Well, you know, I was thinking about this conversation um, earlier a bit, um, and I was thinking I own one of my brokerages is Luxury Big Island. And, you know, when I started that, there were no brokerages with the word luxury on them. Now you have Hawaii luxury listings and Hawaii luxury these and luxury that and luxury the other and everything is luxury. But back then, I always wondered, you know, what, what is luxury, right? That is a big question. Everybody talks about it, and, but what is it? And I kind of had a sense of it. I thought it was, you know, for example, a setting that truly conveys the sense of place as in Hawaii. Uh, what location really makes you feel that you are in Hawaii? That to me starts getting close to what luxury would be, uh, because definitely, you know, finishes and, you know, high ceilings and countertops, but that's something, you know, that granted for granted. Um, but now here in the Mandarin Oriental answering your question, 
I really understood it because what I realized is that so many people come to Hawaii, Stephanie, and you know they um, they buy twenty million dollar homes, thirty million dollar homes, and they're enslaved by them. You know, they, 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 uh, what are you, well, when are you coming? Oh, in July. Oh, that's great. Yes. I'm going to be changing my roof, you know, new appliances, cabinets. Really? Are you coming to Hawaii for that? So long story short, the Mandarin Oriental Honolulu is absolutely effortless living. You come in, you have the hotel staff serving you. You don't have to worry about a thing. And all of a sudden, what happens is that you own your time. And that's a that beautiful is, thing. That's price. That price. is luxury. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, the other towers are saying, hey, come in. The, can I show you the kitchen and the cabinets and the appliances? And look at my windows. Look at my doors. They're so cool. It has nothing to do with it. They still have to, you know, worry about their housekeeping, all the logistics, uh, let alone if they want to visit another island, which yeah. is another huge topic. Yeah. Mowing the lawn, taking care of all the things. Okay. okay. From afar, huh? go yeah. figure, you know, a, a $10, $20, 30000000 million home, manage it from LA. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Landscaping? <laughs> they think that money, I always say money, money cannot buy landscaping. Money no. does not buy landscaping in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell me how you define true luxury. I mean, you just sort of defined it for us, but how do you I'm sell going to how do you say to... <laughs> ah, that? That is an interesting thing because it's an old paradigm. I think from the 60s that luxury is having the huge home, you know, on an acre looking at the ocean. But you have no service, nothing, no amenities. I mean, it's, it's such an old way of thinking. Now, well, I have groups of 30, 50 brokers here for, in, from Hawaii. They've lived here 10, 20, 30 years, born here. And I ask them, hey, how many times have you seen the Napali Coast? So the Napali Coast, so you know, is one of the most beautiful places on the, on the planet. I mean, it's the oldest part of Hawaii. So it has been eroded by wind and, and, and the elements for so long. The cliffs are majestic. The water is the purest you'll ever see in your life. You get into an, you, you sail along the coast of the Napali Coast and it will change you forever. Your eyes are are glittering, uh, you know, so, and I get the chills because it's, it's beauty at, at, you know, so uh, at the highest level. We're here, we're in Hawaii, and from the 30, 50 brokers, you know, maybe 15% of them have gone to the Nabali Coast, and if you ask them how many times, once, maybe twice, it's like a record. Why, if we are in Hawaii? You know, all people that have all the money on the planet, have you been to the Nabali Coast? Well, mm, mm. so the idea, so by thinking of this, we thought we, we developed a strategy, the tower, the Mandarin Oriental Tower has a concierge highly trained that all of a sudden he takes care of all the logistics for you. So you go to the spa, hold your kid's hand, go play in the sand, go play golf. We'll take care of your trip. Meaning because if you go to an Abalicos, you need a boat, you need a captain, you need a rental car, you need a hotel, you need airplane tickets. And that's why nobody does it. Too much work. And if you do it once, you don't do it again. So what is luxury? Luxury is that you can go to the Nepali coast, you can visit, you can go to Lanai, you can go to Molokai. Hey, I want to go play golf with my friends, but I don't want to spend eight hours, you know, working on the logistics. I want to hug my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that is luxury. So how do you market that to buyer? And obviously you probably in, in your real estate career, you didn't start out selling luxury. Was that your very first step or you started well, out like selling houses? You know what? I question how many people know what luxury is, number one, because it, it has taken me a lot of exposure to it yes. to finally understand. And my, a lot of my clients that, you know, they're extremely wealthy. And I see that they don't get it. Like, like they, they, meaning with all fairness, they, they have a beautiful home. And I wonder, but why, how does this property make you feel freer or gives you more time with your family? Or how is, is, is it enhancing, evolving your lifestyle? 
you know, socially, are you are you well connected here? Do you have opportunity to 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 meet like minded people? Uh, all these elements that need to come together. So, um, you know, that takes time even for, for me to understand in order to be able to convey to them because it's new. Even the idea of hotel living, think about it. Don't you love staying in a five-star hotel? I of mean, course. who, wants, who doesn't? wants to leave? <laughs> you know, they take the fold the bed beautifully and you come back to a shiny room and they leave a little chocolate on the table and you don't have to worry about a thing. Can you imagine living in that in your favorite place in the world? So right. that is new. That is new. And, and it's very hard to come by. And something else I can tell you that I was thinking about is, you know, also true luxury is hard to, hard to access because people don't know what it really is and, until you show it to them. You okay. see, it's like, okay, a $30 million home on the water. Is, is, that, is, that, is that true luxury? Right. I mean, do you know your neighbors? Do, can, can you meet them? Are you totally isolated there? Do you live in a beautiful place, absolutely isolated, with no good restaurants? Are, there, are those five-star restaurants? Michelin level? Is there a good spa? Anyway. Okay, so how, do you, like, how did you get into this niche of real estate? How did your real estate career evolve from selling houses to selling luxury? Well, um, you know, uh, it, it'd be boring to talk about myself, but it has to do with with uh, upbringing too. There, there are some things that that you know you you just fully understand. Uh, more, what I'm more passionate about that I never say is uh, the understanding on, of how an ultra high net worth person, a real ultra high net worth. I'm, I'm not talking about a hundred million per se, but above, uh, uh, how do they really feel? You know, they need, they need for safety. They need for, conf they, another word, because it's, it's, it's the beauty of language, right? That confidentiality. Does anybody know what confidentiality is? I mean, how do you learn it? It's like luxury. It's such a big thing. People at that level, and I, I, those things I understand, right? It just happened. It's second nature to me. Um, but um, you know how they really feel. Who, who can they trust? Um, you know, how sacred is that a space with, with their family? But if they can have that sacredness with like-minded people and with service that matches what they really desire, well, that's, that starts getting close to heaven. Eh? So how do you think that that's shaping real estate? How is real estate changing that level of luxury? And do you think it was a, do you think it was a, covid thing was it like just the world changing how did it how did this luxury residence thing well you know take co shape covid is a fascinating thing i'm not going to get into it because everybody fights when they talk about covid vaccine no vaccine uh, so I, I you know i stopped talking about it years ago but something amazing and more current affecting real estate is that you know, you open the news these days, and oh my God, right? You read the newspaper, and it's when, when the world is literally going to end. <laughs> you know, between uh, uh, you know nuclear talks and, and recessions, and you know, and I was thinking, you know, it's so amazing how how fear based package this is because when you sell it, we get addicted to the feeling of adrenaline, and 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 we and we consume that. But if you walk outside here in Hawaii. That's not the reality I'm seeing. It's in the news, but it's not outside. I mean, people are happy. My phone is ringing. People from Taiwan, Japan, Hong Kong, Silicon Valley. I mean, what, what, what's the budget? Well, it's a funny question because more often than before, I hear there's not, not really a budget. But Hawaii used to be a secondary home market. Talking about COVID, something that has changed. It used to be a, a secondary home market. It has become a primary home market. So the, the wealthiest families used to have a vacation home here. Now the wealthiest families in the world are talking about the schools because they want to spend most of their time here. And that is a big change. That's, that's a result from COVID plus this, plus this, plus that, meaning Russia and, you know, everything else. Right. They want to live in the now and they want to enjoy the now stuff and, and, Remote working has become just the thing. 
it is the way exactly. things are going. And so if you're going to work anywhere, why not live and work somewhere that you absolutely love rather than just working at home in your you know, apartment somewhere? Why not be on the beach in Hawaii with your laptop working? <laughs> well, it's absolute craziness. I, I feel when people start worrying too much about the decimal point, because somebody... Uh, a journalist asked me uh, earlier today, they, you know, and how is the, the, the tax situation in Hawaii? And, and I said, I'm not going to lie to you. Taxes are, are you know, people pay here in Hawaii. Uh, you know, it's, it's not the, the cheapest. But look at the quality of life. As I'm saying, I walk outside. Do you know what sun does to people? It makes them smile. You know what, what it does to people to look at hills and ocean, you know, every other day or every day? Actually, every day. Uh, you know, it makes them happy. It makes them lighter. So let's talk about taxes. Yeah, but to what extent? It's all the you free know, vitamin how, D. It, they get all the free is, vitamin D in the world that they want. <laughs> you can be happy because yeah. here, if you do not turn on the TV, there's, there are no marketing ads and politicians tell you what to think. Like literally, it's you and, and nature and people that are probably, you know, how I honestly have some of the nicest people in the world. You know, Ahu and, and so forth, the, you know, I mean, if you, you, you interact with them, you, you'll see in a minute. Um, so if you don't turn on the TV, you, 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 you know, you, you're not plugged into all that mess. People yeah. actually, and, and people want to buy. If you ask me about real estate, um, I mean, I haven't seen, uh, everybody asks me, hey, uh, are interest rates affecting, you know, the, the market and the whole? Not really. I'm sorry. No, maybe maybe in the in the you know in in a lower end uh, you know million dollar maybe right. uh, because there are more people you know that need to access loans and 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 perhaps yes uh, but it's all fear based. Is the brokers pounding the owners? Oh, the world is going to end. Drop your price so that I get my commission. Not really. You don't have to. There's no inventory. Zero. It remains the nicest place in the world. Everybody wants to be here more than before. So what a recession. Yeah. Turn Are you off. feeling that then? You're not feeling the shift much at all? It's still really hopping there in Hawaii? Only only in the news. Yeah, interesting. I mean, we can, we can, we can you know, drown in our own fear, but people want Hawaii and people want luxury and, and people want to enjoy and, and people want to spend. And so, as you said, you know, COVID has re- uh, pushed us to reassess uh, the importance of, of family life. Yeah. Of being, hey, all of a sudden you're looking at your daughter. <laughs> you didn't used to. You were all day lost in the office, running in the rat race, and all of a sudden you're next to her. And hey, you know what? It's amazing. I like it. Yeah. How can yeah. I have more of that? Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's, it changed a lot of things for a lot of people. A lot of people reevaluated their lives altogether because they were forced to be at home with their family and they're like, I really like this. Do I really have to go back to work after this is over? And they, they, they don't right. want, they want to be at home with their family. Yeah. So how did you, how would you give advice to an agent that wants to break into like a luxury real estate market? How do they even get into that niche? How can they get their foot in the door? Cause so many are just pounding the pavement to sell just the regular single family home. And the interest rates right now are killing that dream because it, like you said, it is on the lower end of the spectrum, it's hard. People need loans. How do they get out of that and elevate themselves into a luxury market where they're selling luxury to people? That's a, that's a great question. That's a, that's, that's, that's a real question. You know, I've met so many people that sit in front of me across the table and they tell me, Harold, I was born to sell luxury. I love luxury and all of that. I, and I thought, I used to believe it. Oh, wow, great. And then you realize that it doesn't work per se. Um, I think I think that uh, w what I would say is you need to understand the nature of the person that owns that, whether it's a buyer or a seller, what is the nature of that person? Because I need to deeply care about that person. And that is not cliche. That is yeah. real. How do I really care about him? How, first, you have to understand them. You need to think because, you know, we sell a $10 million home and, and, and the buyer says, hey, send me the, the electric uh, uh, light uh, receipts, the, the electricity, uh, you know, for the last three months. And the, the comment comes up, 
they have so much money. Why do they care? Why do they care? Exactly. But they do care. It's still money. <laughs> yeah. Why not? That's why, why not? they have money. Because they care about things like that. That's why they have money. They're human. And everybody worries about something. If, if, or, or, or in a luxury real estate transaction, something's going to come up. Always. And, and it gets manifested in a, oh, I need to, to change the whole AC system, you know, $50,000, uh, $100,000 or whatever that is, hundred and fifty or a new pool. But those are excuses. Really, what you need to understand is what is really worrying that person. If you, if, if you don't really care profoundly about that person, you'll never make it into the luxury real estate market. That's a great Because point. you'll get lucky. You'll have one sale, one good check. Congratulations. I know people, you know, that have worked with me. They sold an $18 million home. Never again. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's a hard business to run because you're always after the next person instead of you're working with the same people over and over and over again who trust you and know you and are just continuously providing you with business. It's so much harder to try and get a new person every single time. You're just tr going after the new, going after the new. If they know exactly. you and trust you, so, such an easier business to run. Exactly. You know, trying to give, give you something um, uh, from experience, what I really learned at the very beginning that helped me a great deal, and I never forgot is know the market. Again, cliche, big words, but know it. Like you need to know every sale, everything that comes on the market as much as you can, at least of one neighborhood. Like pick one neighborhood that is, is, is a luxury, you know, uh, location, area, resort, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> And, and make sure that you know it better than anybody. Be the expert. Because that will take you long ways. Yeah. What, what, they're looking what they to you, sir. Yeah. They're looking to you for the expertise, and you have to be able to provide it to them. And that generally means work on the agent's part. Like, you need to go preview houses. You need to talk to people that live in the neighborhood. You need to know what events are happening around the neighborhood. You know, need to know what they care about in that neighborhood, what the schools are like. What the kids do for fun? Do they play a particular sport? Or you have to know everything about it if you want to break into it. You nailed it. You nailed it because while you're saying that, you helped me realize you cannot fake it. You can't. No. You right. cannot. If people, people at that level, if you ask me how do they break in the luxury market, they see you in a millisecond. Yeah. Right? There's no faking. There's no cutting corners. There's no dancing around the question. Better to say, I don't know. I'm going to find out. I'm better get back to them. But you should know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it takes work. You're going to have to study. It's, it's, like, it's like school. You're in school for that neighborhood. You need to study everything about that neighborhood, that area, whatever it is, the building you're trying to sell, whatever it is. You're in school. And that's your only job right now is to learn yes. that. And that's how you break in, because it only takes one person. And if you do a fantastic job because you know everything that you have said, then obviously they're going to talk about you. You're in. You're in. You're in. But you got to put in the work first. You're not you're not just going to skate by and just someone, especially at that level, someone who buys a luxury home does isn't going to trust just some Joe Schmo agent that just showed up and said, hey, I want to sell you a house. Well, that's the guys that get lucky, right? So they sell one and it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Because, you know, hey, yeah, no, it was a good experience, but are they going to call you again? And you, you need to stay in touch. Yeah. That's the other thing that people get lazy about. We get lazy about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, but, but that is back to what I said. You need to deeply care. If you deeply care, you're going to stay in contact. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because you really want to know what's going on with them. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. I, I was talking to somebody yesterday. He bought a, a, a $10 million uh, beautiful piece of property in, in one of, of the top, most upscale, you know, resorts in Hawaii. And, and I feel so proud of him because he bought it at the, you know, highest end of the market. Um, I represented both buyer and seller. Nobody knew about it. It's, it's in, in a place called uh, Kukio, and, uh, which is fantastic. And, uh, and long story short, you know, he's going to redo the whole place. He's going to, to expand the kitchen and the infinity pool and the landscaping. And, and I've seen he, what he does to properties before. He's not expecting, he's not investing. 
is just pure love for the place where he lives and he enjoys and, and he converts them into, into something incredible. That wherever you turn, that's where you learn money doesn't buy landscaping. Yeah. Because wherever you turn from that window, you're going to start seeing it's all art outside. And, um, and I stay connected with him. Why? Because I admire him. Yeah. I admire what he's doing. I admire a person that has, you know, a lot of people, they just let their properties run. And in 10 years in Hawaii, properties get dated. Yeah. You know, it's just, oh, the landscaping water it and this and that. Oh, I'll add a couple of things here. And, but that's, that's not it. Yeah. You know, you have to, 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 it has to be an extension of yourself or your personality. Right. And the cool thing is, is your clients, the whole time you're working with them as you're developing the relationship, they're leaving clues as to what you can use to follow up with them later. You want exactly. to know what this guy's doing with this house. You're going to want to go see it. You're going to want to go check it out because it's really cool. So yes. they're dropping clues the whole time about what you can follow up with them on after the sale. So it's not just a sale. But you got to pay attention. Well, uh, in that aspect, uh, Hawaii makes it easy uh, for the follow-up because it brings, it attracts interesting people from all walks of life. Yes, yes. It's a melting pot, right? Hawaii is a melting that, pot of all different cultures and styles, and there's so many different, and it, I'm sure it's even more so nowadays with everybody wanting to get out of the rat race and live in luxury while they work. Remote. Yes, you're, you're literally interacting with different nationalities in a single day, yeah. Uh, over here in my office right now, um, I'm in the gallery of, of the Mandarin Oriental here in Honolulu. I have a, a, a person from Italy uh, as a concierge and a lady helping us with design who's from Holland. Uh, so you see, it's, it's, and that does, and, you know, I, I was born in Latin America. So okay. look at that just right here within right there. a few square feet. Multiple countries. And I have a Chinese person coming in at 11. That's why I need to jump in a, in a few <laughs> minutes, uh, a Chinese gentleman. Okay, so tell me what's one piece of advice you would give to agents anywhere. If they want to truly connect with their client, how do they do that? How do they you you know what? A way to connect? How do you do that? Without thinking, without thinking, because that's the most honest. Know that they can size you up in a second. So okay. be truthful. Be true. Be true. Be always, always, yeah. always, always, always. Whether you mess up, whether you don't like it, whether you see a red flag, whether something's wrong, because all of those apply in every transaction. People think when their buyers are all happy and, you know, if we negotiate the price, we're good. There's so much more. There's so much more that, as you know, is related. So all along the way, just just be true because you know what? They can see you. I love There's nowhere it. to hide. Authentic, be yourself. Be yourself and, and, you, and, you, and, and they will love you. That's great advice. That's awesome advice. Well, it has been amazing to speak with you, Harold. Thank you so much. Thank for you for the time. time. Thanks for defining what luxury is so people really can truly understand what luxury is and have fun meeting with your new client that's going to be here shortly. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. All right, real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Muchastegui jumping in again to thank you for listening to the show. Hopefully you guys loved listening to that one. And I wanna make sure that you know about all of the extra resources that we have. And also we need your help. They say podcasts are free. You get to listen to podcasts for free. But what is the cost of that podcast? I would say if I could beg you to pay anything for that podcast, I would say the cost of the podcast is going and giving a review. So whether you download it on Google or Apple or YouTube or anywhere else, please go give us a review. Say what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us get better guests. The more reviews, the higher we get in the rate rankings. Right now, we are the biggest podcast out there for real estate agents. And we want to keep that spot because we know there's lots of podcasts out there. So go give us a review. Also, be sure to go to hybendigital.com. If you liked any of the resources that those real estate agents talked about, we've got a huge video vault of those resources for free. Every punny that comes on the podcast that we interview, they give us something that helps them get their deals or helps them work with their clients. And we put that in the toolbox in our vault for you. So go to hybendigital.com and you can get it. If you're looking for real estate education, go to rebusuniversity.com. We have all sorts of courses in there to help agents succeed in real estate, how to get the listing, how to negotiate deals, you know, how to become an investor, all sorts of different stuff, rebusuniversity.com. 
And if you want to chat with me, go find me on Instagram. And if you come find me on Instagram, you can send me messages. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. We try to put a bunch of content out there too. You can find me in two different places. It's at rerockstars.com for our real estate rockstars page or at aaronamuchastegui.com for my personal Instagram page where I can chat with you about all sorts of different things. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon.